Hello, Jay. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing excellent. Oh, that's so great. Okay. Can you tell me who you are? I am uh, Jay Phelps. I work uh, at Netflix as a software engineer. <laughs> Very cool. Um, so you have a lot of awesome side projects yeah. in React. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm pretty tell, busy. Tell me about Redux Observable. So Redux Observable is uh, a project that uh, Ben Lesh and I put together, kind of uh, extracted out of an internal app that Ben and I worked on. And it's for managing your async side effects in Redux. And so we took inspiration from things like uh, Redux Saga and Redux Thunk. And we're big RxJS people. We like to Rx all the things. And so we naturally thought, how can we take Rx and use that to do our async side effects uh, in Redux? And essentially, Redux Observable was born like that. It's a middleware. And then you have this thing called epics, which are like process managers. So if you're familiar with Redux Saga, it's very, very similar, except for you're using Rx. React Fiber. Ooh, Fiber. Big exciting things. Yeah, dietary fiber. <laughs> Tell me more about what excites you about React Fiber. I think it's 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 pretty novel, in, especially in, in at least in the JavaScript community um, when it comes to UI frameworks, being able to actually prioritize certain things on your rendering. I think that for me, the the most important critical thing is the input stuff. So like when you're typing in an input box, uh, having that not be janky because when you're typing in an input box, basically everything else, well for the most part, everything else on your page can can you know. Uh, is lower priority because you want the experience when you're typing to be as fast as possible, and uh, you know Sebastian and and Lynn both talks today about that. And I th for me, that's the most exciting thing. Um, I've done a lot of animation in the past. I'm not doing any animation right now, but I've done a lot of animation in the past. And so the, the also the ability to to prioritize animations over other things is also really exciting. Um, I'm just interested to see where it will go. The idea that React Fiber will actually let you, I think, do things asynchronously, correct? To some extent, yeah. I mean, I, I would say it's it's less, I would say focusing on the async nature of it, I think, is less. I, maybe they have a different opinion on this. But for me, I would say focusing on that is, is not as important as the priority thing. Mm -hmm. Being able to basically say, I want to update this, but it's a, it's a low priority thing. Or I want to update this, and it's a super high priority thing. Go, like going back to the input tag stuff. Um, if you're if you're updating the, the the value of an input tag, you want that to be as fast as possible, so that you don't have jank. So the person typing into that search box is not being affected by other things in your app that maybe aren't as performant. Like if you have a, a real time WebSocket coming in that's constantly updating the DOM every you know 100 milliseconds, that could easily create um, a, a delay in the a, a, a visual lag in your typing into an input box. Michael Jackson seemed really excited about this whole idea of uh, React Fiber and allowing you to do async things. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think that's going to affect RxJS or even the TC39 proposal for hmm. observables? You know, I don't know. I don't. I don't Does have. That I don't make have you enough. Nervous or no? I. I don't have enough. Con I probably don't have enough context around it to know how it, it would even be related. Because uh -huh. as far as I know, there there isn't any relation between the two, like mm. or any overlap. But I could be wrong. I'm. I'm. I'm actually learning a lot about fiber here through Lynn's talk. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. You've been a part of a lot of different JavaScript communities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's different about the React community? I would say the React community, to me, seems like it's much more open to, to new ideas, to radically rethinking things. And that's, I think you can attribute that a lot to just fundamentally React itself did that. You know, it, it basically took the paradigm, a similar paradigm, to what we did 10 years ago that at the time when React came out, everyone thought was an anti-pattern, like putting your, your actual logic, uh, your view, your template stuff in line with your actual logic. And, and, and putting your, your, basically your template inside of your, your JavaScript. And that was seen as an anti-pattern at the time. And uh, you know, your click handlers in line and stuff like that. And so they, re you know, they rethought best practices as the buzzword you know, phrase is. And so the community is much more likely to, to, to experiment with brand new things. And some things are good and some things are bad. Uh, you know, Redux, I, I think in a lot of ways, I don't want to speak for Dan, but I imagine 
came out of that idea of rethinking best practices and what can we do. You know, he was looking at flux and, and what can we do to, to rethink this practice. And you know, re obviously Redux has been pretty successful. And, and the, the best practices that have come out of React also have been shared with, with Ember and Angular. And they're both doing similar things now with their component model. The snapshot stuff in Jest has is, is been really great. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Jest, Jest definitely did a good job of reinventing itself. It, when it originally came out, it had not the best reputation in the world. Um, and they've really done a great job of just completely you know, re reinventing themselves without renaming the project, which they could have done. They could have just like, called it something else. Um, but I think it's been great. What is Jest? So it's, it's, a, it's a unit testing framework, and, and it, it was I uh, may be a little wrong on this, but my understanding and from my history and experimentation with it is that it was born originally out of Jasmine, basically some, some help, some additional helpers on top of Jasmine, and actually used Jasmine for the longest time. But now, since, since then, they've re rewritten the helpers, and now it's no longer depending on Jasmine itself. Mm -hmm. So it's for, for writing unit tests, and does a, it has a great snapshot feature, which has been uh, copied and, and uh, emulated in other testing frameworks because it's been so helpful. What do you think React can do better? Like, the framework itself? Yeah. Whew. What do you wish? If well, you I think I mean the with <laughs> with React the some of the best things about React is also some of the worst things, and that's that it's for the most part like as a user, your interaction with React is mostly just JavaScript. There's no templating language. There's no uh, you know. Like Angular and Ember, they all have these more complicated ahead of time compilation steps, and you have a templating language, and you have to write helpers and stuff like that. And there's definitely benefits to doing it that way. And, but on the React side, because it's just JavaScript, you can use your existing JavaScript skills. You can use map, filter, reduce, all those things. And that's really great, but there's some things that the other frameworks do a little bit better. For example, in Angular, um, uh, Angular 2. Uh, Angular 4. <laughs> uh, whatever. Angu the Angular, not Angular 1. It uh, has great primitives for observables, like first class. So like you know, using an observable as if it was a value, and you can async pipe it. And it will subscribe to it for you and, and upload, update those values automatically. There's nothing like that in React itself. Uh, certainly, there's third-party things that you can use to, to basically create the similar things. Um, and I'm not sure that it actually makes sense to add such a thing to React because, again, it's kind of philosophically incompatible with the React way of doing things. It's like, give me JavaScript values. Don't give me promises or, or observables and things like that. So it's kind of incompatible. But at the same time, the friction, like the developer experience friction, some, a lot of times it's just easy just to be like, here's an observable, update this thing. You know, like that's so easy. And uh, MobX does go kind of in that direction. But I do want to make the distinction that MobX observables are not the same as RX observables. They're s very similar in, in concept, but in compatibility, they're not actually the same thing. But um, so that, that's one thing that I think they might consider. I know that. Um, Sebastian and a couple other people have looked into the possibility of, of not letting you use observables as values, but having some sort of lifecycle hooks that can automatically handle the subscribing and unsubscribing and updating state, making that more uh, easy. But I think it's been a little while since they've kind of circled back. They kind of, kind of uh, went off on fiber and been focusing on that, rightfully so, for quite a while. Where can we find you on the internet? You can find me at, uh, on Twitters at uh, underscore J Phelps. That's where you'd find me. Or on GitHub at regular J Phelps. And that's J A Y, not the letter J. Thank you. Yay. Hey there. Are you into reactive programming using JavaScript? Do you have to deal with asynchrony in your web app? Then join this dot instructor, Ben Lash, to learn all of the ins and outs of RxJS in his hands on workshop. Available online and in person. Go to rxworkshop.com for more details and to book your spot today.